This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Welcome to the Howl I Die podcast presents Would I Survive with Nicholas Howe. It's me, Nicholas Howe. Today, we're not going to be looking at How Will I Die, but rather, we're going to take a look at a famous movie and answer the question of would I survive any of the deaths in the movie. For this show, we have a rating scale of will survive, possibility of survival, and won't survive. Will survive means that I would survive the situation either by getting myself out of it or some other means possibility of survival is it's give or take on whether or not i would survive it depends on a lot of choices i think and lastly won't survive is very clearly won't survive the way that this works is i will describe how a death happens in a movie or other media and then give you the rating of whether or not i would survive this week's episode we're going to be taking a look at friday the 13th part 8 jason takes manhattan now originally i very much so wanted to do jason x but i didn't have access to what i was trying to use (laughs) it's a long story but instead of doing jason x we're doing jason takes manhattan which is a lot more comedy than horror and that's kind of what i'm about First kill of the movie takes place on a boat, so right off the bat, would survive because I don't get on boats. Jason comes back to life after his death-ish in New Blood and climbs on aboard a boat, tries to shoot a girl with a harpoon gun, misses, then just jabs the harpoon gun into a guy. I think if I was on a boat and a man was shooting a harpoon gun at me, I feel like I would have the dexterity to jump out of the way of the harpoon maybe not necessarily the gun from a giant man standing next to me so i'm gonna say for the first death it's possibility of survival the second kill happens immediately afterwards when jason takes the harpoon that he missed with and stabs it into a girl i'm pretty sure i could take jason i'm gonna go with possibility of survival (laughs) again at the very least i could get away from him for a, a solid minute she does just kind of lay there screaming instead of doing anything to stop the man from killing her but that's just me it should be noted that while this movie's subtitle is jason takes manhattan most of the movie takes place on a cruise ship which is a wild thing to do when your movie is titled after a city the boat is called the lazarus which if you've ever read anything or know anything about pop culture anything named lazarus is a death pit of despair so there's a fun little nod there third kill of the movie is a rocker chick named jj and she is just chilling below deck jamming on her guitar which jason takes and strikes her across the face with i don't know how sharp her axe is but it does just kind of slice her so maybe she's got blades on the sides i don't know if it were me that's a will survive right there because a no version of me that i know can play a guitar no matter how hard we try but also b if you're playing guitar why aren't you playing for other people why are you playing it (laughs) in the depths of the boat by yourself it's a weird moment in the movie death number four comes a bit later and it's weird okay so there's this guy laying in a sauna with towel over his face and jason comes in picks up one of the rocks and just kind of shoves it into the guy's chest and his chest just kind of lights up for some reason like on fire they that one would be a won't survive i don't know what in my chest cavity would be igniting but I don't think that I could survive open chest, closed eyes. Fifth death in the movie is the blonde prom queen girl who, after taking a shower, is attacked by Jason, who breaks through the door, and while she's cowering in the shower, he breaks a mirror and stabs her with one of the pieces. There are a few bits in there. So she cowers and just kind of sits there but the door is wide open because it's broken and he's not near the door which presents an easy running opportunity which she doesn't take 
this is possibility of survival for me. Because if I saw that door being, like, open like that, I would probably run. Even if it meant that I would get stabbed slightly sooner. Six death has Jason stabbing a man in the back. Wouldn't survive. It's in the back. I wouldn't see it coming. But if I saw it coming, oh, Jason, you know. Just kidding. I would... I would still probably die. Let's be honest here. I would most likely die in most of these situations. But that's not the point of this. I'm an idealized version of me for this version of events. Seventh death is probably the easiest one because the captain of the ship just kind of gets his slit from behind. Depending on how the incision is made, potentially survivable, fun fact. Death number eight is literally just a strangulation where Jason picks up a girl and chokes her to death. Good luck, Jason. You couldn't lift me off the ground. So this one is possibility of survival. He might just punch the crap out of me, as he does later on in the movie, but he couldn't pick me up and choke me, so ha. Although he could just, like, choke me. Hmm. Possibility of survival. Ninth death in the movie doesn't come from Jason. It comes from a nerdy kid who loses his glasses and shoots a man in cold blood. Would I survive a buckshot to the chest? No. So won't survive is the way to go. Jason then shows up and throws the nerdy kid into an electrical panel that electrocutes him to death. Again, Jason couldn't pick my ass up. Sorry. But if he could and he tossed me into an electrical panel, you know who's on a boat and wearing rubber? on his feet at the very least chaboy i don't know if that would save me but i believe it would so i'm i'm gonna say possibility of survival this is the moment where i figure out i know nothing about electricity and how it works for the 11th death of the movie jason climbs up a mass and rips a boy down from it i'm not saying that a normal person could survive a fall from a mask, but I am saying that that happened a lot. Although this child does end up on a weather vane, but my point still stands, potentially survivable. Side note though, what was this kid's plan? If he made it to the top of the mast, he's just at the top of the mast. He has to come down at some point. Twelfth death of the movie is a deckhand who gets stabbed in the back with an axe. Specifically, the axe that mask climbing boy was holding before he started climbing a mask. There is no possibility of survival with that. Axe to the back, I'm out. I am dead. That is it for me. Technically, a lot more people drown, I guess. It's it's literally just kind of glanced over that the rest of the cast of the movie just aren't there anymore so that they could focus on the few surviving members including our final girl. So would I survive drowning? No, because that's how drowning works. But if there was a hole in the side of the ship that was letting in water, I would not be in the room where the water is being let in. I would seek an escape route. Sure, that would probably put me in Jason's path, but I feel like getting stabbed is better than drowning, honestly. So high possibility of survival on that one. Hey guys, Nicholas here with the things and stuff and things and stuff and things and stuff segment of the show. Not going to be doing any advertising or promos during these because I'm doing so many of them. But just as a note, you should be checking out all the fun podcasts on the Big Heads Media Network. They're a great group of people and it's honestly like a family. So if you haven't checked out any of the shows, I highly recommend a ton of them. I'm not going to list them off because there's just too many to list. Additionally, thanks for listening to this, the first of a few of these Would I Survive episodes. And that's all I have to say for this things and stuff and things and stuff. Not a lot of things and stuff and things and stuff in this episode. We've made it to alleys in New York-ish in Vancouver, but it's supposedly New York, Manhattan. Not a death, but a very weird moment of the movie where the final girl gets kidnapped by junkies and then forcefully injected with drugs. Drug users don't do that because that's their supply. So that's the most survivable thing in this movie because people don't do that. The fictional idea of people doing that is wildly off base because I don't know if you know this, but drugs are expensive. Jason kills one of the guys who kidnapped and drugged the final girl and was attempting to sexually assault her, making Jason not a bad guy for a few seconds of the movie, which is incredibly horrifying. Jason kills that man with a stab to the back using the syringe that the junkie just used to drug the final girl. Absolutely survivable because I would not be in this situation. 
Jason gets shot by the other junkie a few times, but just like me, we're strong and resilient men. And then he immediately turns around and kills the junkie by slamming his head into a pole a few times. Gunshots? Easily survivable by thick armored men like myself and Jason Voorhees. Pulled to the face? The amount of force that Jason uses? I'm gonna say would not survive. The next death is the best death in the movie because Jason and Julius, the teenage boxing star basically, get into a literal fist fight. And by that, I mean Julius punches him for solidly over a minute long, unbroken. And then Jason takes one swing at Julius and rips his head off with a punch. It is the wildest death in the movie and I love it so much. But would I survive it? No, I would do the exact same thing. I've been saying that I would do the exact same thing for most of this episode, and I absolutely would get my dome knocked off by Jason. Would not survive. The next death is a secret death because we do not see it on screen, but we know that the police officer that Jason dragged off screen died. Can't say whether or not I would survive it. I'm going to assume no, because Jason did have the man in a headlock. Final Girl accidentally kills another girl because she drives a car into a wall because she's having visions of baby Jason. It's a weird plot point in the middle of the movie, but her ramming a cop car into a wall causes it to explode, and the girl just couldn't get out, I guess, in time like everyone else does. Easily survivable by just getting out of the car. Would survive. Jason then drowns an old man in a bucket of sewage by picking him up and literally just dunking him. Again, have to rip on the point that Jason couldn't pick my ass up. So I'm going to say possibility of survival. He would just kill me a different way, honestly. Technically, according to multiple sources, there's another man who dies by getting thrown into a window. Or not a window, a mirror, actually. But I'm not counting that because that dude probably weighs more than me. And yet he got tossed easily, but he was also a hulking dude. And the mirror didn't shatter behind him. So I'm not counting that death. Next death is a sanitation worker who kind of just is in the sewer for some reason and he gets killed by getting a wrench across the noggin which completely splits it open I assume because the death takes place as a silhouette instead of on screen. I think Jason could knock my head open so I'm gonna say wouldn't survive. And that's it for deaths in the movie. The final girl and the final boy actually end up getting away, sadly, which means that there's no more deaths for this movie, which means this is the end of Would I Survive, Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Astoundingly, there's a high possibility of me surviving throughout the movie. There are a few deaths, obviously, that would take me, like a axe to the back, but it's entirely possible that I would absolutely scrap with Jason Voorhees. Join me in the next episode as we look at another piece of media where there's a bunch of deaths and I figure out the answer to the question, would I survive? And remember, death is coming, so why worry about the inevitable? Focus on the possibilities. To hell 